in gastrointestinal tract uh, the components of food should be uh, broken down by enzymes into small molecules which can be absorbed and for that sake there are mechanisms of secretion there is motor activity of gastrointestinal tract there is mechanism there are mechanisms of absorption and uh, um, we will describe these processes along the gastrointestinal tract <clears throat> so digestion begins in the oral cavity what happens in the oral cavity in oral cavity saliva is produced saliva which uh, has um, several components like amylase amylase is enzyme that breaks down starch starch uh, carbohydrates is the most important enzyme of saliva second component is lysosome lysosome which uh, uh, produces antibacterial effect antibacterial effect and there is mucin mucin is uh, the viscous component of saliva uh, is is important for uh, composition of the bullus food is um, uh, in the oral cavity is converted into the bullus uh, which can then be swallowed so next stage of um, digestion is swallowing what about the regulation of salivation so salivation or production of saliva is uh, regulated by autonomic nervous system the sympathetic nervous system induces the salivation increases the volume of saliva so this is normal salivation this is sympathetic nervous system but saliva in response to the sympathetic stimulation is viscous and there is no uh, high concentration of enzymes parasympathetic increases the uh, volume of saliva even more and uh, the saliva uh, uh, in the case of parasympathetic sim stimulation uh, contains many enzymes and it uh, is not viscous it is liquid so both uh, divisions of autonomic nervous system increases the salivation okay so then uh, uh, it should be mentioned that salivation is based on reflexes conditioned and unconditioned reflexes what is the difference unconditioned reflexes is when is when food is placed into the oral cavity and stimulates the receptors for example if uh, we have uh, lemon on uh, in our mouth in the oral cavity the acid will stimulate salivation and unconditioned reflexes so for example if you will try to imagine an, a lemon then you may feel that saliva is produced in, in your in your oral, oral cavity so there is no lemon it's just imagination but it is uh, uh, the type of conditioned reflex so um, then uh, uh, bolus passes esophagus it takes several maybe seconds uh, and uh, reaches the stomach stomach so in the stomach we have cardial part this is cardial part and we have pylorus pyloric part of the stomach uh, the, uh, in the stomach gastric juice is produced gastric juice gastric juice so we have about seven, two liters, two or maybe even more liters of gastric juice per day. So, uh, for mentioned saliva is released in uh, the volume. So the volume of saliva is about one and five, two liters per day. Uh, the composition of the gastric juice. Gastric juice. Uh, it uh, contains so-called pepsin pepsin which is produced from from pepsinogen pepsinogen pepsi pepsi nogen is converted into pepsin pepsin is an enzyme that breaks down proteins into peptides 
the cells of the uh, gastric mucous membrane they produce pepsinogen which is not active inactive enzyme the reason to prevent self digestion of the gastric mucus what is needed to activate to convert one to another is hcl another component of uh, the gastric juice hydrochloric acid it fulfills several functions first is conversion of pepsinogen into pepsin second function of hcl it denaturates proteins proteins so it uh, is the beginning of um, um, degradation of proteins in chyme so the uh, bullus in stomach and in intestine is called chyme, chyme. Uh, so denaturation of proteins three antibacterial effect hcl kills uh, majority of uh, microorganisms which may reach the stomach there is one uh, which is called helicobacter pylori which may live in such acidic environment acidity in this in the stomach in the cardiac part it is about one or two very acidic in pyloric is about five maybe six so acidity acidity is less so antibacterial antibacterial function and four it it coordinates uh, the passage of chyme from the stomach into the intestine coordination of food of a chyme passage from the stomach to intestine okay uh, then uh, the phases you should know the phases of the gastric secretion uh, in accordance with academician Pavlov, Ivan Pavlov, Russian scientist. So we have three phases of gastric secretion. First phase of gastric secretion is called cephalic phase. So phases of gastric secretion. Uh, first is called cephalic. Uh, brain mechanisms so what does it mean what does it mean cephalic it means it is based on conditioned and unconditioned reflexes okay if you read a menu in a restaurant uh, there is cephalic uh, stimulation of gastric secretion or for example if you uh, uh, if the dinner was given at 2 p.m. and uh, after some uh, several weeks at 2 p.m. there will be some secretion of gastric juice about 50 ml 50 milliliters of gastric juice released during this phase is about 50 ml uh, it is uh, important for in the induction of the second phase of the gastric secretion which is called gastric phase gastric gastric phase uh, at that phase the um, uh, composition of gastric juice uh, degradates the pre predominantly the all proteins of the um, uh, chyme and the third phase of gastric secretion is called intestinal intestinal it is induced when chyme reaches the intestine duodenum and at that phase the gastric secretion is inhibited is inhibited uh, gastric secretion is stimulated by parasympathetic nervous system by vagus so vagus nerve which releases acetylcholine acetylcholine and this acetylcholine stimulates the gastric secretion so parasympathetic nervous system is also called rest or digest so it stimulates the gastric secretion uh, but also there is a humoral regulation of the gastric secretion in the mucous membrane of the stomach we have several types of cell cells we have parietal cells parietal cells which releases hcl hcl we also have chief cells chief cells they uh, release um, pepsinogen pepsinogen uh, which is converted into pepsin so chief cells chief we have uh, also so-called G cells. So G cells belong to acute system. It is diffuse endocrine system, which uh, in the stomach releases gastrin, the hormone, which in the tissues activates mast cells, mast cells, 
or a tissue basophils, the granules contain histamine. So in this case, histamine is re uh, released. It stimulates H2 histamine receptors type 2 on parietal cells. So this mechanism in increases the production of HCL on the mucous membrane. So, and um, we have several uh, drugs, medications, which may inhibit, block H2 histamine receptors type 2 and uh, therefore uh, decrease the secretion of HCL. So that was about the mechanisms of gastric secretion. And now uh, the chyme after the uh, several hours in the stomach, lipids, they uh, remain in uh, the stomach for uh, the five, six hours, carbohydrates pass the stomach for one or two hours, uh, proteins something in the middle, so the, the, the chyme reaches uh, the intestine, duodenum. What happens in the duodenum? Predominantly, uh, so m mostly all components of chyme are broken by special enzymes in the duodenum. Uh, duodenum releases the proper enzymes and in your duodenum we have the output of pancreas. Pancreas is the most important uh, gland of digestive tract which produces enzymes for almost all components of chyme. For lipids, lipase, for carbohydrates, pancreatic amylase, for um, DNA, DNAs, for proteins, we have trypsin uh, and, uh, trips and chymotrypsin, which also are released in inactive form, in trypsinogen. Trypsinogen is converted into trypsin by uh, enterokinase, by special enzyme enterokinase. But also in the duodenum, we have the output of bile duct we have uh, from uh, bile from gallbladder so and bile is released into the uh, duodenum what is the functions what are the functions of bile bile so first bile emulsifies the fats emulsifies fats producing the milk from uh, the piece of uh, fat and this uh, uh, this is important for lipases to be able to um, break down the lipids. Second function of bile. Bile stimulates the motor activity of the gastrointestinal tract. Stimulates the motor activity of gastrointestinal tract. Motor activity. Bile activates lipases. Activation of lipases. Also function of bile. Um, by the way, in the stomach, the special factor is produced, which is called intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor. This intrinsic factor, which is produced in the stomach, then uh, reaches the intestine and is crucial for the absorption of vitamin B12. Vitamin B12. Vitamin B12, um, which uh, is absorbed from uh, the intestine only in the only in uh, the case if we have intrinsic factor so b12 is called extrinsic factor and is very important for uh, hemopiasis if there is deficiency of b12 then anemia develops which should be treated if there is no intrinsic factor for, for example due to ulcer or gast gastritis by uh, administration of vitamin b12 directly into the blood by injections by injections because it if it is given orally it cannot be absorbed into the blood so uh, in the small intestine in duodenum jejunum ileum uh, almost all components of chyme are broken into parts what are those parts proteins to amino acids lipids to glycerol and fatty acids and uh, carbohydrates to monosaccharides, to glucose, um, fructose, to monosaccharides. So, uh, from this uh, small intestine, 
uh, and in the large intestine, absorption begins. But before we speak about absorption, uh, there should be mentioned also that there is uh, the important factor, microflora, in the large intestine. What functions microflora, microflora uh, fulfills? So first of all, first of all, uh, microflora uh, it uh, it breaks down uh, it breaks down cellulose, it breaks down cellulose, and there is no enzymes to break cellulose uh, except the enzymes of microflora. Second function of microflora. Uh, second function of microflora is uh, defense against certain microorganisms with which, which can be pathogenic, which can be pathogenic and, uh, for example, Escherichia coli, E. coli pathogenic uh, is uh, controlled by normal microflora. And third very important function of microflora is that microflora is involved in the production of vitamins. For example, vitamin B vitamin K, which is important for, uh, for uh, hemostasis. All these uh, vitamins are secreted by normal microflora. After antibiotica, after therapy with antibiotica, microflora should be normalized by administration of certain drugs, which uh, will normalize and make it, uh, make it good.